Welcome to the show. I'm Jason Whitlock, and I'll tell you why the Patriots' dominance is something the NFL should be ashamed of, and why the NBA All-Star Game might actually be worth watching this year. Speak for yourself starts now. Oh, man, we got a great show planned for you. Colin Cowherd is out. Hello and welcome. So I'm joined today by a couple of Hall of Famers, Rod Woodson and Eric Dickerson, and Super Bowl champ Greg Jennings. Rod Woodson and Eric Dickerson are Tech Bowl, Bowl Hall of Famers as well. I used to play with That's those guys. Up. All right, let's start with the Super Bowl, where the Patriots are back for the eighth time in the 17 years of the Brady-Belichick era. While their dominance has inspired a lot of Patriots hatred over the years, Giants receiver Brandon Marshall says NFL teams should be beating themselves up. How long has Bill Belichick and Brady been together? 18, 18 years. years. 18 years. Almost 20 years doing this together. The league is not competitive. We all should be ashamed. Even you guys that's been covering them on TV Why? should be ashamed. Why? Players should be ashamed. Coaches should be ashamed. Owners should be ashamed. How do we let these guys do this year in oh, and year oh, out? Let Congratulations. Them. You guys are phenomenal. You guys are great. Can't get any better. But how does 31 other organizations let this happen? Listen, I, I actually kind of agree with Brandon Marshall here. Uh, there should be some shame here because when I look at the Patriots, and Rod, you're just coming off the coaching ranks. When I look at the Patriots, they outsmart everyone. They're not more talented than everyone else. People haven't met their intellectual ability and their ability to be disciplined and focused and not do dumb things. When I go back and look at that Jacksonville game, they didn't get beat. They got out coached from the sidelines, and they were more disciplined th than the Jacksonville Jaguars. I, I, I think there should be some shame for allowing the Patriots to just come in year after year after year and outsmart 31 teams. I don't think there's shame because they, the New England Patriots drafted a, a player in the sixth round, Tom Brady. Nobody knew who Tom Brady was. <laughs> and he ended up being arguably the best player to play in the National Football League at that position. At the end of the day, they're not outsmarting people. But what they are doing, they're outscoring people on the offensive side. And on the defensive side, they just don't make a lot of mistakes. They just, they're fundamentally sound. Is that outsmarting on somebody? I don't think that's outsmarting anybody. I don't think we should be ashamed. But when you hit at the low end of the draft, in the sixth round, something like that, with a player like that, on the offensive side, it gives you so many chances to win Super Bowls. Uh, oh, I, I want to go back again. When I look at that Jacksonville game, I see it time after time after time. Jacksonville, at the end of the first half, was stupid, mind-numbingly stupid. They went to the uh, locker room with two timeouts and 55 seconds on the clock. That was dumb. Uh, the, the, the way they ended offense with getting that delay of game penalty and taking that first down away, it was dumb. Every time I watch the Patriots, the other team does dumb stuff, and it happens over. It's not by accident. They're outsmarting people. I don't think they're outsmarting. But he says, you know, they 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 outplay you. I mean, look, when you draft, everyone goes from the same draft. Some people have to pick high. Some people pick low. Like you said, you can't say if I'm gonna have the eighth pick in the draft or the tenth pick, and it's, and I blow it, it's on me. But if I pick the the fiftieth guy and I get it right. Fine. The Patriots are just, like you said, a well-oiled machine. Should you be ashamed? If you play for the Patriots, are you ashamed? You're like, we're going to the Super Bowl. Man, I don't want to go this year, man. No. I, went, I went last year. went too many no, times. No, no. Yeah, He's talking about the 31 I, 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 other teams. I, I, they should be ashamed. They shouldn't be ashamed. They should, no, they just get beat. That's it. Look, I'm not a Patriots fan, but I just have to give credit what credit is due. Now, I'd say this much. Now, they should be ashamed how they cheated the Raiders with that tuck, that, that bat. They, <laughs> they filmed the Rams practices. They should be ashamed of that. You know who should really be ashamed? The Seahawks. They put the jackass suit of the year on by, by not running. Do what you do. You got Marshawn Lynch in the backfield. There you go. Shout run the up. football. There you that, go. Another that's dumb. dumb. That's Another Atlanta. Dumb. Yeah. Run. Don't, don't try to do something you're not. Be who you are. The Patriots are who they are. That's my case, Eric. They, but I'm just and saying. Brandon Marshall. Okay, well, Look, I, but they I, shouldn't I, be ashamed. I agree <laughs> with Brandon Marshall to a degree. And, and here is why. Like, I don't think the league as a whole should be ashamed. It cuts off at the NFC. AFC and then the AFC East. The Buffalo Bills, who Brandon Marshall did not play for. <laughs> the New York Jets, he played for them. 
the Miami Dolphins. He played for them. Brandon Marshall should be ashamed <laughs> with those three teams that they could never take the range from the New England. This is why he so strongly feels. Are, have they been dominant? Yes, but they've dominated him in his career and what he's tried to do with the opposing teams within that division. They played the Patriots twice. If there's anybody who can decide whether or not you don't have to go through New England through for a, at least a single playoff game, it's those three teams. They win in the it's, – it's like here, in AFC East champions every single year. Any other division in football, it's a revolving door. Somebody else is winning. It's not dominated solely by one team. Yeah, one team, though, is dominating the Super Bowl year after year after year. And there are 31 other teams that have an opportunity. I'm going to go back again at you, Rod, because you're coming off the coaching field. We fall into, oh, the and, and I'm part of this, the officials favor the Patriots. That's a whiny excuse. The Patriots play in a way that makes it hard to call penalties on them, and they sit around and wait for the other team to, do, to be overly aggressive and get those penalties. I think the Patriots wide receivers and, and the whole offense Drawing pass interference is part of their offensive game plan. They're going to throw up those long balls. Maybe you catch it, but maybe the receivers are going to operate in a way that draws the defensive pass interference. Again, I just go back to again and again. They're smarter than the opposition, and that to me is on the coaches and the rest of the players in this league to match the, the Patriots' level of intellect. I, I think the biggest thing when you play a team like that, you're saying you can't make mistakes. So when we played them, we played them in Mexico City, and we were like on defense, we were saying, when Tom Brady gets going, you can't make mistakes. You have to stay on top of the ball. You, and when he goes to this fastball, you can't let him have that. Because once they go to 12 personnel, two tight ends, uh, two receivers and one back, and he goes speed ball, they go hurry up, and you're trying to get off the field, you can't make those mistakes. You're trying to substitute guys when you shouldn't be substituting because there's no, nobody going out of bounds. The clock is still going. They're not substituting. Those type of things, you can't make those mistakes. When you make those mistakes, they make you pay. I think at the end of the day, they're just fundamentally sound in everything that they do. And if you make one mistake, that's the mistake they capitalize on. And I, I, I agree with, with Greg, uh, Jennings right here because at the end of the day, it's the <laughs> AFC East. Absolutely. They, it's their job to just throw the champs, and nobody can do it. But look at the AFC East. I mean, look at that. Buffalo. They, all right, they got they went to four Super Bowls. 10,000 years ago. He said, yeah. he said four Super Bowls. And, and, and lost all, 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 lost all four of them. When you look at the AFC East, what do the New England Patriots have that these three teams have been looking for for years? A quarterback. Buffalo a since coach. Jim wins. Kelly. Uh, Miami since Dan Marino. Marino. I mean, the Jets. You, we can say Joe Namath, but Never. Joe Namath's <laughs> career wasn't amazing. Never. Never. Co I go to coach. Miami, not since Don Shula. Yeah, very true. Uh, who was the other team? Buffalo, Buffalo, not since Marv Levy. Mm -hmm. The Jets, not since Weeb Eubank. Uh, awesome. <laughs> these are, he these, went way back. Yeah. Yeah. Way, these are, way these back. are things, that, this is why the, the Patriots are paralyzing in a sense because when you're, when you're trying to dethrone them, you're trying to do what you just said. You're trying to play mistake-free instead of just letting it all hang out. And when you get the lead, you, they paralyze you because now it's like, okay, let's hold on. We got them. Let's hold on to what we have. And it, you can't beat a team you can't, you with can't that mentality. Play like, you, and you, you got you to play football. And you can't even – you gotta, can't hate on the Patriots because at the end of the day, think about – who they have on their rosters. They don't have a bunch of Hall of Famers. Sure Tom Brady, who's he played with? Making my point. Yeah. Who's, I mean. I, Julian Edelman, Gronkowski's I mean, Hall of Famer. Maybe, Talent maybe, wise. maybe. Talent-wise, Gronkowski's Talent Hall of Famer. Okay, we got Moss. The year that he had Moss, yep. he threw for 50 touchdowns. So the one year he did have somebody in that caliber, he just went off the chain. The guy, has this, he's produced year in and year out with par players, and I hate to say that on a consistent basis, but a par players throughout his career, and he's produced. I mean, that's the coach. I, I, that's, that's the and coach. That's, that's my Belichick. point that's Belichick. in terms of the Jacksonville Jaguars when it was over. They, they in, uh, complaining about the officiating. I'm like, have bad. you looked at your coaching staff yeah, the coaches, and the decisions they made? And the, uh, Circling back to you one more time, Rod. The second half of that game, the Jaguar game, 
I, it, it was dumbfounding to be saying, you can't, you guys can't keep running the same plays over, over and, and over, over, over and over, and over again the on the offensive formation. side, thinking that you're going to have different results. They started stumping you toward the end of the first half, and you kept going back to the same plays in the second half. And at the end of the day, New England. And so, again, got, and, and we'll wrap this up and move on, but again, as a former coach, d- did you ever sit back and say, man, the other side really outcoached us today? The Bill Belichick and the Patriots really have an organization that's better than ours. No, as a coach, as a coach, you blame the players. <laughs> I'm just about to say, I want to hear this. I said, I want to hear this. I want to hear this. All right, welcome back. Rod Woodson and Eric Dickerson, Tech Mobile Hall of Famers, and Greg Jennings are back. Let's move to our good friend Vince McMahon who announced yesterday the XFL is coming back with plans to relaunch as an eight-team league in 2020. The original XFL closed up shop after just one wild season, but McMahon says this time will be very different with no gimmicks and strict rules about who will be allowed to play. When I said the quality of human being is very important and just as important as the quality of the player, what I mean by that is um, you want someone who, who does not have any criminality whatsoever associated with them. And in the uh, XFL, even if you have a DUI, you will not play in the XFL. So that would probably eliminate some of them, Uh, not all of them. If Tim Tebow wants to play, he he could very well play. Could you clarify on the on the on the on the players that will be allowed to play in the league? So if, if would Colin Kaepernick be welcome in the league? Again, I think uh, anyone who plays the game of football well uh, and uh, meets our criteria in terms of the quality of the human being as well as uh, the player, uh, why not? As long as everyone abides by the rules as laid down. Love this. Love the XFL coming back. I love the fact this defeats the narrative that somehow football is this diminishing sport. Vince McMahon wouldn't be doing this if he thought football didn't work on television. I think the NFL, when it's been at its best, there's always been some competition out there. You can go all the way back to the AFL and what it did to professional football and took the NFL to another level. You can go to the USFL and the competition it brought and the salary bumps for players because of the USFL. You can go back to the original XFL. They... Uh, came in with the cameras or the microphones on the field, and next thing you know, we had hard knocks where we were getting access to the players off the field and with microphones, and they introduced the sky cam that we all love now. I think this is absolutely awesome, and I think the XFL this time around is going to be successful. It will last more than a year. I like the idea. I don't know if I like the time frame of the idea. January. It's in January. It's a postseason for football for the NFL, so you're going against the NFL. You're going against the heart of basketball because the All-Star game is right there, so the heart of the season is going to be going on during the end of the basketball, NBA basketball. So I, I think the time frame of going against that, if they, I think that they moved it to where that as soon as the uh, NBA All-Star game is, are, is over, over, I think yeah, right around in that time you have a window. It's, it's a 10-week season, eight teams. I think it's, it bodes well because the NFL is the only team or the only sport, major sport, that doesn't have a minor league. It's the only sport that doesn't have it. Even golf, the web.com, right. they have that. You got, you, know, you got the G League in basketball, but the, it's the one league, and me being in coaching the last several years, you've seen multiple players coming out too early who shouldn't have came out. They probably should have stayed in college another year, and they need to be developed. And you have the practice squad, yes, but they don't play. And until you start playing, you don't develop your skills. You know that as a player. So you, I just think that this is a good idea. This, I think the timing is wrong. They should just move it a little bit. I, I agree with that totally. I think the time, you, you, you can't have it like, like you're talking about basketball, you know, because everybody's going to watch the NBA Finals. You know, XFL, that's, that's not until April and May, the playoffs, though. But, so still, people, but, but still, people watch basketball over the XFL, I think, right away. I mean, cause till it, it's like anything. It has to catch on. I mean, it has to, it has to get hot. But my, my, my question is, is that he said he won't have people who have had, like, DWIs or, you know, got 
any criminality. Any criminality. So, yeah. so Johnny Manziel, I mean, what does that say about Johnny? Can Johnny Manziel play in this league? I mean, I, think about wrestling. You tell me all those guys that wrestle don't have records, <laughs> some kind of record? I mean, does McMahon have a record? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I think that's the big question. You, you don't want to alien, I mean, alienate everybody. The NFL, we'd have a lot of players in the NFL wouldn't be playing right now <laughs> if they didn't have some kind of record. So I feel like that, I think he's got to drop that part of it. I, I, I like the idea. However, I don't think it could sustain success. When you look at what the NFL does and who the NFL is, from top to bottom, league office to player personnel to coaching, if I enter into the XFL, I'm trying to get to the NFL. League office, whatever position you hold, if you're good enough, the, the le every right. position, they're looking to get to the next level. And so I don't think you can sustain success when, you go when you're going to have players who are only coming because they're really trying to get to the NFL. And so when you, and when you think about the NFL, you're, you're talking about el the elite of the elite. You're not starting with some of those players in the XFL. You don't, you're not starting with a Tom Brady or an Aaron Rodgers or all these guys. You have to tr hope that I get one, maybe two guys that catch on, and then, like I said, they're going to think they're good enough to play in the NFL. Let me throw a curveball at you all. Here's what I think is not being said, and this is just my theory. I have no inside information. This is my theory. This is a much longer play that Vince McMahon is making, and I think he's making this play, this is just my theory, with the approval of the NFL. I think what Rod said off the top, hey, we don't have a developmental league for the NFL. And I think anybody that has a brain looks at the NCAA and college football and says, you know what, this amateur thing is eventually going to blow up. They, college can't fix their system right. We've got a lot of players that go into college football, uh, don't like the fact that they're getting paid and everybody else is getting rich, and they bring some of that bitterness and animosity into our game. We just got exploited for three or four years in college football, and that changes their mindset when they reach the NFL. I see this as a potential disruptor for college football. I see some 18, 19, 20-year-old guys eventually say, no, I'm not going to be bothered with college football. I'm going to go play in the XFL from January to March or whatever the league is, make 100000 bucks or 150. Who knows what they may be paying at that time, and then go into the NFL. And so I eventually see a partnership between the NFL and the XFL coming down the line. I think that's the key. I think if the XFL was going to go against the NFL, it's not going to win. Exactly. Yeah. But I think if they partnership similar to the NFL Europe, where they, the NFL let certain players, their developmental players, go to the NFL Europe. They got some playing time under their belt, and they came back and matured. I mean, you think about this. If the Arena League wasn't there, Kurt Warner, who's never, a Hall of Famer, yeah. would never have made it. Right. So you need some type of avenue, some type of revenue for the, these guys who are coming out early. And maybe they don't go to college. I'm not really sure if that's going to be the case or not. But there's something there for them to improve their skill set to get to where the best of the best play. Well, well every, first of all, every guy's not going to play in the National Football League. So some of these guys that come out of college or maybe high school that go to the XFL, they'll be, you know, I may never reach the NFL, but me still prolonging my, my, my football career and playing in the XFL, that may be enough. I mean, some guys who haven't played for two years, all of a sudden, man, I go back, I get a chance to play in the XFL, I get a chance to play football again. Because you know how it is. Guys want to play football. If you love football, you just want to play football. And if you get some money for it, it doesn't have to be a lot. I'm getting paid. I, I, I've always felt like what Rod is talking about, the NFL needs a partnership with a junior league where they can test out certain things, where they can test out manipulations of the rules before applying them to the NFL. And again, that's where I think this is going. And I, again, I see it as a potential disruptor for college football. And because I think if you look at, and, and we don't have time to go all the way here, but if you look at the Colin Kaepernick and the protest movement and where that energy is coming from of, I just want to be rebellious and I'm upset and why it's not there in the NBA. The, the NBA players, the best ones don't spend three or four years in college sports mad that, man, my coach is making 10 million 
and I'm here eating Raymond noodles and hustling some girl to buy me clothes. I, I think a lot of NFL players come to the NFL angry about their college experience and it expresses itself in ways that football, I think, has recognized. We need to do something about that and that, that's why Vince McMahon may be making this play. All right, welcome back to the show. I'm joined now by Fox Sports Radio host Doug Gottlieb, Fox NBA analyst Chris Broussard, and the founder of the big league, Jason McIntyre. Let's move to the NBA. Where all the intrigue and mystery surrounding LeBron James and Steph Curry's all-star team draft is over, with the teams being announced last night, and now the fun begins. Steph picked a starting five of Harden, DeRozan, the Greek freak, and Joel Embiid, while LeBron nab former teammate Kyrie Irving, the Pelicans' Twin Towers, and Kevin Durant, who talked about playing against his Warriors teammates. Well, finally, somebody picked me number one. Uh, that feels pretty good. It's going to be fun competing against Steph Clay and Draymond. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of trash talk throughout the weekend, so I'm looking forward to it. It should be fun. Katie said on Instagram, Steph, I'm coming for you. Are you shaking in your boots? I ain't worried about him. I ain't worried about him at all. I ain't worried about him at all. I ain't worried. <laughs> Where was I picked? I don't know. Probably dead last. <laughs> my, my, I'm like the, uh, you know, I'm the guy in the, the pickup game where, you know, during the summer where it's like, I'll okay, he's a big guy that can shoot. Like, I guess I'll take him. Well, I see I was the last pick on the list. I was just trying to figure out, you know, uh, it was alphabetical. alphabetical. See, I told you, man. <laughs> alphabetical order, man. Of course I was first. <laughs> The only thing I know for sure is that Russ went last. <laughs> See, he's crazy. All right, I got a hats off to the NBA. This, they finally made the All-Star game matter again. This will be the crown jewel of the weekend. It had been the dunk contest or the three-point shooting, the, skip, the parties. Now it, the focus is back on the game. This idea will make, the players are actually going to play hard. This will be a competitive game. This is the greatest game of pickup basketball we will ever see. I, th I, th I got some stat before the show. When LeBron played in his first All-Star game, I think there were 240 points scored. Last year, 370-some-odd mm -hmm. points. We're going to see a real basketball game amongst the best players in the NBA for the first time in a long time. I, I think they fixed the All-Star game and the All-Star weekend this will be, they will care about winning. I am cautiously, maybe even aggressively pessimistic. I disagree with you. I think the selection was great. The idea of having them, now it should have been on TV, okay? It should have been televised so everybody can see live in arenas so guys can feel it in the arena who's getting taken. But Jason, they're not going to play hard. There's no money at stake. There's nothing at stake here. It really pride, isn't. It's like pick, when you play pickup, there's no pride and reputation. There is, and but there's, there should have been that in the last couple of years. They don't care. Not, they're I, not going to care. It's a three-point shooting contest. It's an alley-oop contest. The won't last, be this year. I'm, I'm with Jason. I do think so far they fixed it. Now let's see how they play. Nobody is asking for playoff level intensity. <laughs> But just play like an open gym, like you said. Play like you would play in the Drew League or like you play in the Rucker or like you play at UCLA in the summer where you're, you're competing. I don't think the problem is just lack of competing the last few years. I think they've been shooting way too many three-pointers, and that could continue. Hopefully not. But I do think right now, not only do we care about the game, we care about who wins. Like, before you cared about the game to see what Tracy McGrady does. Why, why do what does Magic do? Why do what you does care Jordan about who do? Wins? Because they picked, it's just, it's just, I mean, does it matter? No. No. But it's, it, we're into a, it because a, of the drama. Million dollars a dude. You put a million dollars a dude, those guys will get in a defensive stance, they will There's compete. There's no question they about make, it. Hold on, they making 20 million a year. Do you <laughs> think <laughs> one million is going to matter to yes. them? No. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, Rich people care. like money and free stuff. Okay? The they league just do. have to do that. <laughs> it that don't hurt you, they will. But here's the, I mean, I think there's somewhere in between of both of what you guys are saying. It won't be 190 to 188, as, as you said the score was the last couple of years. But it's still not going to be like a 99, 97. Uh, well, nobody team. wants that. It too is much, still going to be. I mean, if you look at the exactly. way Steph drafted, he's got the best three-point shooters in the league on his team. He's got the guys who've made the most three-pointers, top four in the league. So they're going to be jacking threes. And Giannis. But there may be a little bit of defense. I would agree, a little bit of pride at stake. But, guys, LeBron's played in every single game of the regular season, okay? He's got to do that this year. 
I don't see him playing 25 minutes and trying his butt off to get a win in an All-Star well, game. He'll play more when than 25. He, well, I would hope not. This is the weekend LeBron should be chilling out, relaxing in one of his two L.A. homes the, and not trying too the, hard. The only tweak I would make to this next year is LeBron and Steph should be the coaches as well. <laughs> and, and, really. And, and, again, we should make it true pickup basketball. And, and I think you and Gottlieb are just wrong. They will care. They're going to play. I think you're right that they went in with strategies in terms of what type of teams they wanted. Steph wants a team that's going to play from beyond the arc. LeBron, when so they are we going to see a lot of DeMarcus Cousins post-ups and Anthony Davis on the block? Like, well, guys Cousins, double teaming. You, we're like, well, you, want, you want them calling their own fouls, too? I mean, come <laughs> on. Like, on. There's got to be something. Wait, 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 wait. We're, we're not going to If we're doing, a brainstorm, if we're doing a brainstorming thing here, I do agree with Jason. I've often thought, hey, get the 20 best players and play king of the court. Like, you'd play king of the court for four teams of five. That I would watch if there's some money at stake because they'll play hard. But DeMarcus Cousins doesn't play any defense in the regular season. Why would he play defense in the All-Star game? Again, if we can get him to play at regular season level, anything close to that, that's such an improvement over what we have been seeing of, of the All-Star game. The All-Star game had turned into the actual game an embarrassment for the league. People didn't like what it looked so, like the so Pro Bowl. Wh why, based upon the selections, do you think that's any different? Because now pride and ego are on the line. LeBron and Steph, who's the, again, they're into the intellectual battle. Who picked the better team? There are guys that, I should have been the number one pick, or was I the, and next year that will be a part of it. But I just think pride and ego are now involved and I think LeBron and Steph will give good pregame speeches. Or they're, they're on Texas Chains yeah. right now talking about I mean, but Jason, what we're going to do. But Jason, the day, LeBron yeah. is going to be like, oh, Steph, we got you. We got the better team. And all Steph Curry has to say is, all right, we'll see you in June. Well, of course. Let me know look, how look, look, nobody's, really nobody's comparing this to a regular season right. game. So that's why they're not going to try. We don't, again, just, I don't think the All-Star game was bad until four or five years ago. That's all we're asking for, just play basketball. What they've been doing the last five years was not even basketball. It was go ahead and dunk, go ahead and throw it off the glass and dunk it. Nobody's around. A lot of, a lot of people like that. I, I'm not, no, nobody, nobody likes that. They don't, they don't like it. That's that. why they, made, they don't make a format change if everybody's happy with it. So, look, I, we agree it's been bad, or at least outside of Jason, we agree it's been bad. <laughs> I agree the, the selection was cool. It's a cool way of doing it. Okay, what I don't understand is why all of a sudden, because there's a couple of people who might have beef, there's a whole bunch of players... Like, we hadn't heard from DeRozan or Al Horford. Kevin Love, he doesn't care. He's just oh, back out in L.A. with his girl. You think it's going to be any better? You think it's going to be just like it's been the last few years? Modestly better. The tip-off will be interesting. There'll be a little trash talk. And then they'll get up and down, not guarding anybody, whoa, whoa, throwing alley-oops and shooting whoa, threes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't think egos have been engaged at all? Because that's all you really have to do to, to twerk up people's level of competition. Egos have been engaged. Now, listen, this is a lot like you mentioned the parties, which you two will be at. Right? And I'll try and be begging to get it. <laughs> and, uh, and they're all the same. We're just like the Super Bowl parties. They're all the same. They're all the same. The hardest thing is to get in. Yeah, and then once you get in, true. you're like, man, everybody's just, just standing around, just standing around having a drink. <laughs> Did you go to that party? What was it like? Like, it was like every That's other party. True. That's very true. <laughs> you dodged my question. <laughs> Have egos been engaged at all? Slightly. Marginally. Marginally. They Marginal. have. I'm with Jason. I th look, we'll see what they... This is their one chance. I, look, if they, they should. go out Sunday they should. and they just the it one in, sport. The Football, thing. you can't do it because dudes can get hurt. You baseball, you can't Kyrie do it. Irving, you Kyrie You can do it in yes. baseball, too. You don't think Kyrie Irving is taking great satisfaction in the fact LeBron drafted me and basically had to, had to acknowledge he needs me. Well, if he fakes a knee injury and doesn't want to play, now <laughs> thinks something's up. <laughs> I think uh, you're going think a little so? too far. He needs me. I mean, <laughs> come on. He like, drafted him. He, he had been, a choice. He, he might have been the last guy there. He might have been the last guy there. He was the last, last guard on the tape. Last guard. He might have been, been the last guy there. He took Durant, then he took Urban. No, LeBron no, no. LeBron tried to put he took, together. He, I bet you he took Anthony Davis. Yeah. He, he put together the best team pop. I, okay, we'll get to that here in a second, all right? Well, looking at both teams' full rosters, I got to say LeBron dominated Steph in the draft. LeBron's team has got a ton of size, and the reigning MVP, Russell Westbrook, coming off the bench. He's got Kyrie Irving. He's got, I, I, I love Boogie Cousins in an all-star game. I love Anth throwing him and Anthony Davis. They could, Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis, Boogie Cousins, LeBron James, and Kyrie Irving. 
I got to see that lineup. LeBron's got by far the best team. The only chance that Steph Curry's team has is they knock down a bunch of threes and trick up the game and, and make it a joke. LeBron's got the best team. Okay, so two years ago, there was 139 threes taken combined. Last year, there's 122 threes taken combined. So even if they dial it back just a little bit, this is going to come down to a three-point shooting contest. It's old man basketball. Three-point line to three-point line. That's what Steph is playing. That's at the end. This is a this is a this is like an uh, exponentially worse version of of the Houston Rockets, how they're going to play. And that's why if I had to you know, pick, I'd take Steph Curry's team. Yeah. He knows what this game is about. He knows the basketball is trending the way of the shooter, not the big man. And that's why his team's better. When I first looked at the starting lineups, I was like, did LeBron get like the first three picks? <laughs> I mean, it was like, what is Steph doing? You know, LeBron's got the bigger names. He's got the bigger players. I want to see LeBron, Durant, the Twin Towers from New Orleans, and Porzingis on the floor together. You might <laughs> see that for about five, history. yeah, for five minutes. But the more you really look at it, I do think LeBron has the best team and I would give them the edge, but you're right. The shooters are on Steph's side. So this will be like, I mean, the big guys don't really play like big guys anymore, but this could be the old style, big yes. man type game versus the new style. Plus there he's got, is plus such he's got a big parallel to what LeBron picked to his current Cavs team versus the current Warriors. They are the three-point gunners. They are the new style. Let's sit out beyond the arc and kill you. And, and it feels like an old-school, new-school thing. I mean, you look at the roster, you're right. LeBron's got the better players, no doubt. But for three-pointers, yeah. I mean... Clay, Harden, Lillard, Lillard, and Curry with Embiid as your center? I'll give you all the two-pointers you want, DeMarcus. Anthony Davis, have all your dunks. I'm going to make threes, and I'm going to win the game. I want to see you grab a rebound. I want to see and, – and, again, I'm going back, bleeding back into the previous topic. They're going to play hard. I think there's going to be some fouls in this game. I <laughs> think they're going to bully. <laughs> Why? The, the, oh, the come because there's, oh, here's, here's the people problem. people want to win. Here's the challenge for LeBron's team, the drama. You knew his locker room was going to be full of drama. He's got Kyrie and LeBron, and then he's got Westbrook and Durant. So it's going to be stories coming out about drama. Hey, don't forget Kevin Love. <laughs> Kevin Love Kevin with Love LeBron. Was in hey, you know hey, he Kyrie. had the house going, Kyrie. Listen, if they lose, it's going to be Kevin Love's fault. <laughs> oh, you know yes, right? I can already blame him prematurely. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about Victor Oladipo and Westbrook on the same team? That's that, to me, another, that's another, that's like a fourth that, level they, of look, drama. LeBron's locker room going to be full of drama again. Yes. You know, it always is. Curry's going to laugh what all the you, way to the... Y'all are totally avoid it. I think this is going to be a physical game from the... From no, LeBron. it was physical. It's like, yeah. do you think the Pro Bowl, they're going to tackle some yeah. people in the Pro Bowl this weekend, too? <laughs> this Jay, ain't yeah, the right. Pro Bowl. You, the same thing. Yeah. you like, can look, You can look, get hurt in the Pro Bowl. You can't really get hurt look, in basketball. I, I understand. We're, we're, you're a little bit, we celebrated your 50th birthday, so you're a lot older than me, okay? But <laughs> we're generally the same age, same, so... Yes. Do I wish that it would be physical? Do I wish it would be big versus small and they'd actually go out and compete in private battle line? Yeah. I don't know what it is, but that, that's all talk. Every time they get out there, it gets worse, not better. They play less defense. Boogie Cousins, while he could score every point he wants at the block, he's going to shoot 23s in this game. Well, he's doing that's well, exactly. And he might knock down 40% of them. He, no. he, he, he <laughs> might. To he your might. point, Doug, this is a chance for them to do a, a do-over for the yes. All-Star game. Correct. This is it. Because if they go out there and they mail it in again, and it's like it always has been the last five years, then next year is going to be and bad. It's and it's a, well, no, they're already, te they'll televise it next year, and they'll take it to the next level. Oh, don't worry about the game. I'm not We're sure they're going to televise it. It'll be interesting. LeBron James sure has already will. said today, I, I wish we had this on camera, about he's an ambassador for basketball, and he has acknowledged the All-Star game hasn't been working, and he feels like it needs to be fixed. If LeBron cares and Steph cares, everybody else will care. This will be, again, it's not going to be playoff. It's not going to be regular season. It will be dramatically better than what we had been seeing. And LeBron's team's going to win. All right, welcome back. Doug Gottlieb, Chris Broussard, and Jason McIntyre are back. Let's move to LeBron James, whose future continues to be a hot topic around the NBA with the Cavaliers struggling on the court and mired in drama from the locker room to the owner's box. Speculation is growing that LeBron won't be in Cleveland after this year, including from veteran NBA reporter David Aldridge, who, th who says he thinks LeBron will end up with his buddy Chris Paul in Houston. I think this would be a disaster for the NFL, uh, NBA. I, I think that 
I think people have seen enough of this, of great teams or very good teams adding the best player on the market. And j just this whole super team scenario, I think, has played out. And I think this would be the ultimate of we've already seen LeBron go down to Miami. And now he's like, I'm going to top it. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to do it again and go to Houston. I don't think this is good for the league. I don't think this is good for competition for the league. I think the ownership is going to have to go in and try to figure out a way that you can actually develop teams and grow teams uh, in a more natural way than just players title chasing. and It's too easy for the Golden State Warriors right now. And if we just reduce this to Houston and Golden State and everybody else is just running around, I, I just don't think that's good for the NBA. Baseball is actually going through this a little bit as well. I don't know if you saw Scott Boris's comments where he said, you know, you got to take a third of the teams in baseball aren't trying to be competitive. And you look at the NBA, one of the things that's skewing some of the wins and loss totals is there's a third of the team or maybe a less than a third of the team, maybe uh, more in the, in the eighth of the teams that are non-competitive, right? And so I, I do think that at some point fans are going to say, I'm not going, I'm not watching. I just don't think Houston's going to be the place. Because, yes, Houston is built around James Harden and Chris Paul, but it's also built because they have the perfect shooters, the perfect position players, the Trevor Arizas, the Ryan Andersons. Um, Clint the, yeah, Eric Clint Capella, Gordon. Eric Gordon. But you have to get rid of all those guys just to get to LeBron. And LeBron needs the ball in order to be successful. James Harden needs the ball to be successful. Chris Paul needs – like, it doesn't – now, I think L.A. ultimately will work, and I think for whatever reason, when you transition to L.A. later in your career, people give you a pass. You go to Houston, yes, I think then it'll be the ring chasing, then people have enough. For whatever reason, because the Lakers so many times have stolen somebody else's star and then built their own dynasty around that, I think that that's the one uh, time which fans will allow you to do so. You made some good points about why Houston might not be the place. As I'm looking at different scenarios, Houston lo looks like it might be the only viable option. Whether to work or not, to your point, is legitimate. San Antonio, if he was even thinking about that, I think that's the place he should go. But Kawhi Leonard might be out of there with all that drama going on. The Lakers, now, I know some people have said Paul George is still definitely going to the Lakers, and that might be the case. But the comments he's making is making it look like he would be a phony Unless there's an yeah. implosion, Back you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, he's why is he going overboard talking about how great it is in OKC with Russell? So if he stays, I don't see LeBron going to L.A. by himself. In the East, Philadelphia, will Embiid stay healthy? Why would you go there? So it looks like Houston might be the only landing spot. If he goes there, I think it's great for the league. We need somebody that can compete with Golden State. You said it would just be Golden State and Houston and everybody else running around. Now it's Golden State. <laughs> And everybody else running around. You know, at least you got somebody that could challenge him. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Now, I don't think LeBron would work in Houston. You know, we've been yeah, over that. That's a legit but question. It would Why be great for the league. Would work in Houston? Well, I mean, again, I, you know, I do believe there's a ring chasing element to a 33 year old going to a 60 win team. And also, Mike D'Antoni's system would be a poor fit for him. Again, you want the three point shooters. You want you got James Harden dribbling gotcha. Chris Paul. It just seems like a bad fit. But the league super teams are great. Unless you guys think the 80s were bad when it was the Lakers and Celtics going to the finals every single year. That was uh, magic. The, 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 the there were the, only five the, teams that got to the yeah. finals in the 80s. And then wait, hold on. Was, remember, when Michael there's Jordan... A difference, there's yep. a difference, though, and I think what Jason's getting to is the star players didn't move. Some of the ancillary pieces yeah. did move, right? Dr. J was the Sixers. Bird and McHale yeah. and Parrish were the Celtics. The ancillary pieces, when we have a superstar, superstars moving from team to team and chasing. The, and the, the players are controlling it, too. Well, I like that. I like that. I don't aspect. mind it, but a lot of fans may think. Uh, I don't know. The, the TV ratings different. are back at the Jordan era the last few years with the Warriors Cavs finals. Uh, you know, we could go back to post uh, Kobe and Shaq when it was the Nets and the boring Spurs and the faceless Pistons. Those were down years for the NBA. Go look by any metric you want, whether it's uh, attendance, ratings. You know, revenue is up. More, uh, everything's more, going well to, for the league now. To support your point, the worst decade in probably 50 years was the 70s. 11 teams made it to the finals. Eight teams won the finals. Yeah, parody that, that works decade, in the NFL. It, that was parody. It, you don't want parody in the remembers. NBA. Oh, here's, here's the biggest problem. It's Houston. Okay? If you ask it's a top five TV market, Doug. Uh, it, it, it is in name only. 
Okay, it just is in name only. You don't think? I mean, he's in no. Cleveland now, and you people are asking. I, 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 I agree, buddy. but when you're LeBron, you go to New York or you go to L.A. You don't leave home. Okay, you don't. He move went to Miami. Yeah, huh? that's not a big market. No, Miami. I understand that was then. It's a different time now. This is a final one, final move. You go to New York, you go to L.A. You don't go to Houston. If he goes, I understand Houston's the fourth biggest market in the top five market, whatever. It ain't New York. It ain't L.A. You're LeBron James. You're an ambassador for the sports. Ambassador for the sport. Don't let, don't end their career chasing a ring with Chris Paul and James Harden. Is that what Charles Barkley happen. did? Uh, yeah, it did. How'd that work out for him? <laughs> no, I, I'm in agreement with you. I but think LeBron. You, so in you LA think he'd be sense. better off going to New York or L.A.? Yes. And almost, and let's say even without Paul George. So you're not competing for championships uh, anymore. Well, why not? You're just, if you go to L.A. without George, you got no shot well, at all. Oh, if you don't go without George, you'll get somebody else. It's a great free agent market. They have space for two. Him and two Cousins. Guys. Him and him and whomever. Him and Anthony Davis. You figure out a hey, way. Is it going, hey, going anywhere? Ball we got to go.